the government's anti-extremism protest report launched in Westminster by a think tank with ties to US hard right. We're going to read into this more from Byline Times, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from Byline Times with the headline of the government's anti-extremism protest report launched in Westminster by think tank with ties to US hard right. The counter-extremism group has close ties to both the government and to hard right think tanks. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and shares across social media so others are notified of this video. The Purpose Defense Coalition. <sighs> <clears throat> we know that um, protesting in this country has been uh, reduced and it's not a case now where you can just simply stand on a box somewhere and just start shouting and screaming and whatnot. No, we don't have this, the, the, we don't have the same that we used to have. In fact, and it's getting much harder now uh, for people to protest and certain, certain groups are targeted as well. Protesting is so important, but there is absolutely no question over the last 14 years that that right has been eroded over time. Um, the, the abilities to do so, like there has to be a lot of planning in place. I look back as far as even far back as when <coughs> we had the when the king was um, and the king had his coronation and how, you know, there was a, there was going to be a protest by the anti-monarchist, the Republican, uh, Republican group. And everything was all in agreement with the police and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, on the day, they just couldn't do it. Uh, they would they would stop doing it, and they were arrested and whatnot. And still to this day, they've still not been given like clear indications of why of why they were why they did that. Um, they literally because this was a once in a t the once and one and only time for anti monarchists to stand against uh, the king and the coronation, the whole monarch the monarch, and wanted a republic instead. And they were denied that, blatant denied that, denied that, despite the fact that everything all the way you're building up to that coronation, they were working in cooperation with the police, and all of a sudden on the day, everything changed. Now, whatever you might think of certain protesters, such as Extinction Rebellion, the um, the Palestine Palestinian protest, or even the far right extreme ones, like some of the far right extremes that we uh, white wing. Um, uh, protesters that we see, like such as the English Defence League, for what for whatnot, and we can discuss whether or not we have disagreements about w which protesters should or shouldn't. The fundamental fact is is that the government wants to suppress protests. They want to suppress them, and I'm not sure about whether Labour will intend to release and allow uh, re will, will undo some of this damage that there has been by protesters. I really don't know. Hand on heart, are Labour going to be able to do this? Now, you would think that a Labour Party that obviously has its affiliated unions that have influence within the Labour Party are going to do something about reducing and allowing people to have more more being allowed to freedom of speech to be able to protest. The quite honest truth is, is that I don't know. Considering that some uh, corporations, some billionaires and, and millionaires have donated to the Labour Party to buy the influence of the Labour Party. There is, there has been, I've covered it numerous occasions that they have, um, and to say that they will not influence this uh, next this Labour government if it does come to pass, if it comes to pass, uh, to say that it won't inf have influence within it is folly. Um, there will be influence there, and questions about how much are they going to allow protesters to be able to protest is going to be uh, one thing for sure but it does feel like that that are that we they are being more and more eroded i'm seeing i see a lot of people complaining about you know oh they make too much noise or oh, they're blocking traffic or oh, they're doing uh, this and it's just like to me it's like well they're protesters that's they're supposed to cause disruption that's the whole point now i agree with the points of where they go too far it's like when it comes to vandalism um and especially and um going outside mp's homes i do think that's a step too far i do think it's perfectly all right to do it outside their their workplace outside the house of parliament outside political 
political buildings. Um, I think it's perfectly acceptable for protesters to be able to gather outside them. I don't think it should be done outside of people's personal times. That's my personal opinion. You can agree to disagree on that. But I do think they should be uh, they, they should be uh, allowed the freedom to be able to do that. But this this is about this this report here from Byline Times. This is about them in the dark behind the scenes of thinking, how can we suppress this? How can we make this look like, oh, we're not taking their rights too far away, but we are taking their rights away to an extent sort of thing. This, this is the crux of what this article is about and the direction that we are going. And we need to remind ourselves that the power and the right to be able to protest, to speak your mind is oh so important. You know, the, the majority of the nation, the majority of the United Kingdom was against the Iraq war. And so many people went out to protest and uh, to voice their opinions. Now imagine if we went into another war conflict here in this time. Would we be able to do the kind of protest that we did before? With these, with, as they continue to play down and make it more harder for people to protest? Not with this current lot in power. I don't think so. Let's read more into this, you guys. So... A controversial Home Office back review into protest laws in the UK was launched at a private event in Westminster, hosted by an opaque lobbying group with alleged ties to the US hard right. The former Labour MP John Woodcock, now styled as a crossbench peer, Lord Watney, launched his report calling for more restrictions on protest groups at an event hosted by the Counter Extremism Group, a think tank that does not disclose its source of funding, whose founder was accused of having ties to extremist alt-right groups in the US. They're calling for more restrictions on protesters. That's what they want. They want to sub subject, they want to stop you having a voice. It comes as the government's so called independent advisor on domestic extremism singled out defensive companies and energy providers for protections through draconian new anti protest measures in its report. His report fails to point out that he is a paid lobbyist for organizations representing arms and fossil fuel giants. In a report released through official uh, government channels, he called for ministers to allow to consider allowing businesses to sue protest organisers for damages on the grounds of disruption caused for the firm. He also suggested charging protest uh, groups the cost of police demonstrations, which would effectively render nearly all large-scale de demonstrations unviable. This would literally <clears throat> now this um, this here about charging the police for demonstrations. This is a tactic that that uh, the Argentinian president is is implementing was trying to implement in Argentina. I remember covering a report on how the president basically said, you know, all these people protesting against the, the draconian laws that, that Mendy is doing in Argentina. He's basically said, anyone protesting, they're going to be paying out of their own pocket, yeah, paying out the police times for this. And I knew, the moment I knew when I saw that story, I knew somebody here in the UK was going to take that, take that, I uh, knew somebody somewhere was going to see that, take that idea and try and bring it over here. And this is exactly what I, sus what I feared when I saw it. Um, <clears throat> for damages, what, what damages? Of, on the grounds of disruption caused to firms? Well, that's the whole point of a protest is to cause disruption. See, this is literally like, this goes against everything about protesting. They want to silence protesters. They want to subject and destroy any kind of freedom of speech that you will have. This is suppression. This is going down the route of uh, austerity. Uh, sorry, austerity autonomously. You know, that's the, the, down that. It's just going down that dark path. And we know. We know what's going to happen if people are no longer able to speak their mind. They're just going to complain on Twitter and social media as, as they continue to erode this. This is a very dangerous path that we are going. And Labour need to undo this. And it is down to Labour members, it is down to unionists, it's down to those who are inside Labour to pressure the Labour government if it comes to power, to pressure them to undo these damage, to undo this, to allow people to have that freedom to be able to uh, freely protest. It's really important. Even if you fundamentally disagree with, with certain groups, they need to be able to freely cover, uh, be able to protest. <clears throat> As reported by Byline Times in 2022, the counter extremism group uh, CEG is run as a profit making business through a private limited com company. Counter Extremism Network Limited, which was founded in January 2020 by its then director Robin Simcox. Company records show that Simcox held significant control over the company until January this year, holding more than 75% of shares and voting rights. Its latest account shows net assets of £1 and just two employees. 
Robert Simscox was appointed by the then Home Secretary Priya Patel as the UK's Commissioner for Countering Extremism at the Home Office in 2021. He recently made the front page of the Telegraph claiming that Gaza protests uh, had made central London a no-go zone for Jews. That's nonsense, and I can I can call that nonsense because even I know people who are Jewish living in London who are perfectly fine and are perfectly able to live their lives. Uh, yes, of course, they still have uh, they still have these kinds of uh, these kind of name callings and whatnot. But those who I do know are very much in favour of a ceasefire within Gaza. And then, then while every now and then they will get hounded, they haven't been assaulted or there's no no go zones for them. That that's just absolute nonsense. A claim contested by many Jewish people, including the sizable regular Jewish bloc on the anti-war marches. In 2022, Byline Times reported on Simon Cox's wide-ranging ties to hard-right pro-Trump U.S. networks. As uh, Nazim Ahmed had wrote two years prior to founding the CEG in 2021, Simon Cox spoke at the U.S.-based Center for Immigration Studies, which has been accused of circulating anti-Semitic white nationalist material over a 10-year period, including articles by noted Holocaust deniers and enthusiastics. It has been uh, de- designed as a by as a designated sorry as a hate group by the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center, the SPLC, a civil rights law firm tracking extremist groups in America. The CEG hosted today's report at the Institute of Mechanical Engineers in Westminster to a room of around 50 people. It is not clear who invited and the event who chaired the new Labour peer, uh, Peter Mandelson. (coughs) The group's current director and holder of its controlling stake is Hannah Stewart. She joined the self-described neoconservative Henry Jackson Society think tank in 2011. According to the two of the Henry Jackson Society, HJS founders, Matthew Jameson and Marco Atolio Hall, the HJS became a far-right, deeply anti-Muslim racist organisation, dominated by right-wing anti-Muslim and anti-immigration views around 2011. There is no suggestion that Stuart was behind this. After HSJ, Stuart went on to join the Conservative Policy Exchange think tank. Policy Exchange is close to Rishi Sunak and senior right-wing conservatives. Stuart led a Policy Exchange Commission flagship extremist group to the Conservative Home Secretary from 2017 to 2018, as Byline Times had previously reported. Since Stuart's departure from the Conservative Policy Group has called for a protest clampdowns while receiving funding from oil firms that has been targeted by climate groups. <coughs> Just Stop Oil, the direct action group repeatedly named repeatedly in Lord Waltney's report, accused the government advisor of being funded by oil and gas companies. Spokesperson added that he's a direct financial ties to companies whose profits are threatened by the groups he's proposing to crack down on upon on rendering the findings le- le- illegitimate. The Waltney and the Home Office and the Counter Extremism Group have been contacted for comment. Uh, just as a caveat there, it says update. This piece was amended post publication to note that this report was not published in Parliament, but the Institute of Mechanical Engineers in Westminster uh, are apologies for this error. So they just put point to point that out there just for just for brief reference there but um yeah they want the oil and gas companies are pumping money into into people that can perhaps that can silence these protesters and silence these those who are going to cause disruption cause damage to their their bottom line and this is going this is happening on the world stage and they will do everything across there there are organizations that they are lobbying Lots of organisations in many different countries around the world that oil and gas companies are doing uh, to suppress and dismiss any kind of terms of climate change, to disfigure any kinds of of noise whatsoever, uh, to try and keep the status quo about oil and gas, when quite clearly we can transition out of oil and gas. And it's just a case of politicians are getting too much money from these oil and gas firms to be able to do so. Uh, That is the issue here. And by shutting down protesters, especially something like Just Stop Oil, um, you're reducing the, vo- the volume and the noise being made about the issues of climate change uh, to the general public uh, because they want to distract the general public from these issues. Which is why you hear this rhetoric sometimes from certain people about saying, why, why, oh, we, we can't be talking about the Green New Deal and whatnot because, you know, we're in a cost of living crisis right now. And that's the thing, to try and distract you from and don't get me wrong cost of living crisis is a major issue but so is the planet that we live on that we all live on and we all must share and use together um 
there, there's countless information, countless scientific facts that are showing that our planet is getting warmer. There is no denying this. Um, you can continue to stick your head in the sand and, and say to yourself that it's not happening, but I, I'm reading, I see the reports. I see what's happening out there. And there are many, many countries who are face, who are breaking records, breaking barriers in terms of temperatures and whatnot. And oil and gas is playing a massive contribution to this. And we need to change that. Um, and it's just a case of being able to, we have to be able to protect protesters, uh, be able to be allowed to speak their minds, even if they're protesters that we don't agree with. Like I say, I don't agree with the likes of English Defence League and the far right and some of their protesters. <clears throat> I don't agree with some of the pro-Israeli uh, demonstrations in, in solidarity with the IDF and what they're doing with the atrocities in the Gaza Strip. However, I do believe in their right to be able to protest um, because it is their right in doing so. Um, we should not allow people to take those rights away, whether it's left or right, for that matter. And um, hopefully the Labour government coming in will ensure that uh, people's rights are protected. But what do you guys think? What do you guys make of this government anti-extremism protest report? Is there any credibility in it? Maybe you're someone who thinks that, listening to this and, and probably thinks that, no, I don't believe in any, any of these protests whatsoever. Maybe you have a difference of opinion or maybe you have more to add to it. Let me know your thoughts and more in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media so others are not fire this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further, financially support me and the work that I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p. Or join me on Rumble, Patreon, or Facebook for exclusive content on those platforms. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope to catch you all very, very soon.